What are focal lengths and how can you use focal lengths in your photography to produce better images? Well, in this video, we're going to find out firstly by looking at what focal lengths actually are, how your lens works and how focal lengths are measured. We're then gonna head out on location and see how making subtle changes to your focal lengths can vastly change the look and feel of your images. My name's Steve and welcome to Behind the Tripod. Let's get into today's video, but before we do, I love the science behind light and photography and the first part of this video is going to cover some of the science behind focal lengths. If you're not interested in this and would like to just skip to the practical tutorial, please use the chapters below to skip the theory bit and go straight into the practical parts. Still here? Great. So to kick things off, how do we actually measure focal lengths? If you look at your lens, you'll see a series of numbers that change as you turn the barrel. Now don't get this confused with the focusing ring which is something completely different. The numbers we're looking at are on the barrel itself and these range here from 14 to 24 which means that this lens here has a focal length range of between 14 millimeters and 24 millimeters. If you've got a prime lens such as this one you'll see just one number in millimeters and this one's a 50 millimeter lens which means it has a focal length of 50 millimeters you can't zoom in or out with a prime lens so they're less complicated they have a lot less glass in them and therefore they're often a lot smaller than their zoom counterparts but the principles of what we're going to talk about today will be exactly the same so what do these numbers actually mean? Well, I'd suggest grabbing a cup of tea, a mug of coffee, or even something stronger if you need to, because I'm gonna delve now into the realms of optical theory. So the numbers on your lens are actually measurements in millimeters. For example, your lens may be at 50, which photographers would describe as a focal length of 50 millimeters. If your lens is at 200, this will be a 200 millimeter focal length. And if your lens is at 20, well, you get the idea. But what exactly does the millimetre number mean? Well, to answer this, we need to look at light and what happens when light enters your camera. Have you ever looked through your lens? If you have, you'll clearly see that your image is upside down. This is how the light hits the camera sensor and your camera's computer then flips it the right way round on your LCD screen. But why is the image upside down in the first place? Well, as the light enters the lens and interacts with the glass elements, it is focused onto a specific point. This is called the point of convergence. And it is here at the point of convergence that the light crosses over and the image becomes flipped. This is exactly what happens when light enters our eye through our pupil and hits our retina upside down and our brain then flips it back so it appears the right way round again. Back to camera lenses and we measure the distance between the point of convergence and the camera sensor in millimetres. And guess what? This is the number on the barrel of our lenses that we use to define our focal lengths. So to sum up, a 50 millimetre focal length means that the point of convergence is 50 millimetres away from the camera sensor. And likewise, a 70 millimetre focal length means that the point of convergence is 70 millimetres away from the camera sensor. Okay, so are you still with me? Good. We're now going to look at how focal lengths affect your field of view. Now, field of view is something that simply means how much of a scene can be captured in your photograph. So a wide field of view will have lots of elements in it and will be usually referred to as a wide angle lens, whereas a narrow field of view is much tighter, so it has fewer elements in the scene, and this will include your telephoto lenses. Okay, but what's actually causing that change in the field of view? Well, when the flipped light enters the camera, it needs to be wide enough to cover the whole sensor, but narrow enough not to spill outside of the sensor area. To achieve this, the lens is calibrated so that exactly the right amount of light enters the camera where the sensor sits. Here you can see a focal length of 200 millimeters. The angle where the light enters and leaves the point of convergence is quite narrow, meaning that the field of view hitting the sensor will also be quite narrow. Now, let's put a 24 mm lens on our camera. Now, if we kept the same light angle at the point of convergence, only a small part of the sensor would be used and the image would be tiny. Instead, as we use smaller focal lengths, otherwise known as wider lenses, 
The point of convergence moves closer to the sensor and the light angle increases to cover the whole sensor area. This gives us a much wider field of view, which photographers often call a wide angled shot. Here you can see a comparison with the lens with the 200mm focal length above and the lens with the 24mm focal length below. And I hope this helps you to compare each of the light angles at the different points of convergence and how this affects the field of view of each lens. Right, so I hope I haven't bamboozled your brain too much so we don't go too far down the rabbit hole. We're now going to go out on location and look at how changing your focal length can affect the photos you take. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, I do tutorials like this every week. So please like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss a video. Okay, so I'm here on location. I've got a lovely image set up with a rock here and I'm going to be moving back. So I'm going to start with 14 mil and we're going to move back to 200. And I'm going to do regular stops between wise. And I want you just to look at the rock itself and look at the shape of the rock and how that changes and specifically look at the background. I want you to be aware of what happens as we move back. Think about does the background expand or does it compress? Okay, so we're going to have a go now. I'm going to take my first image. It's bracketed. I'm at F11. One five hundredth of a second because it's a very bright sunny day. As you can see, I'm squinting a bit here. Okay, and I've got it on a timer, so we'll get all three brackets. Magic. Okay, well, let's move back and do the next one. 18 mil now, let's go again. Hit the shutter, still bracketed, still the same exposure settings. Okay, sun's in my eyes, but 24 mil this time. Set on a timer, off we go. 35 millimeter now, I'm gonna hit this camera. Okay, 70 mil now, this is the full extent of my lens. So this is the last one I can take with this lens and I'll swap it out. So let's go again. Okay, I'm at 85 mil this time. You can really start to see that background coming forward and compressing in the image. 105 now. Okay, 135 now, I'm getting quite far back. You can really see that compression now with the background. Giving a lovely bokeh as well, lovely and soft. Right, I'm quite a way back now from the stones. We've got a great blurry background. You can see how, how the background's really compressing against the image so let's take the shot so i've finished editing the images now and i just want to go through them with you so i've made a little montage of the images that will hopefully make that a little bit easier for you and i just want you to look at the shape of the rock for warping and stretching and check out the background to see how the different focal lengths affect it and how it interacts with the foreground And that's the effect of changing focal lengths. You see at wider focal lengths, you'll get more of the scene in shot. Objects close to the camera might appear a little warped and stretched, but they'll look really large in the frame. As well as this, the space between the foreground objects and the background will appear absolutely massive. But on the other hand, at the longer focal lengths, objects close to the camera will start to take on a more natural shape. There'll be a lot less in the frame, but the distance between the foreground subject and the background will also be much smaller. The background can almost appear very large and almost overbearing and loom over your foreground when you use a very high focal length and that's sometimes an effect that you might want to create. It's also a lot easier to create a soft blurry background which we photographers call bokeh. And if creating blurry backgrounds or bokeh is something that you want to learn, you should watch this video right here. 